Sairam everyone, just to recollect what we were discussing last week. Swami had uh, been talking about the Uttarayana Kala, Dakshinayana Kala, and then he went on to say that uh, Uttarayana Kala is not necessarily a, a time period, external time period, but your inner state of mind, your state, inner state of being. Then he also talked about the the nadis in the body, the ida pingala, and um, the energy and which which is active will determine whether it's uttarayana or dakshinayana and so on. And then at the end, Swami has said, you know, it's uh, none of this is so essential if you can think of the Lord incessantly at all times. That is that itself will take care of everything. Um, I think that's what we read and discussed. So I will. As sisters to continue from where we left off, Saira. The end of everything that is born is death. Some yoga leads to viyoga. Construction must result in the destruction of that which is constructed. It is a law of nature that birth ends in death, and death leads to birth. The stage which knows no coming and going is a stage when the universal Brahman is visualized. For since Brahman is all pervasive, where is the other place from which the coming can be affected and to which the going can be performed? There is no need to doubt whether such a stage is within the reach of all, whether all can achieve this victory, nor is any special effort or peculiar good fortune or especially designated designed act necessary. It is enough if the mind is always fixed on Paramatma, if the Lord is meditated upon without break. That will cleanse the mind. The delusion clogging it will disappear. This by itself comprises moksha. For what is moksha but moha kshaya, the decline of delusion? A person who has achieved this moha kshaya will attain Brahmatva, the stage of Brahman, howsoever he may die. Such a person is called a Jnani. Thank you very much. I think this, we were discussing this, so I will open it up for anyone's comments. Uh, anyone who would like to share something, please go ahead. I think we have already looked at the Telugu version, I guess, for this one, if I remember. Yes. So, yeah. It, yes. Yeah. Okay, and thank you. So if, if there's no uh, questions or no comments, I think we can move on. Yeah. One thing just um, in the Telugu, I think it says, um, for the sake, you, you need not make any effort, need not try to attain something, need not do any yogic actions. Um, so when Swami says that, because in the next line, he's saying, always center your mind on Paramatma, that is enough. Um, so when Swami, often he's like makes statements like that, but I guess the way I'm understanding it is it's, we still do need to do those actions and we still have to do all the effort um, in, order to, in, or, in order to constantly center your mind on Paramatma. Yes. Is that is that the way to look at it? Because I think in different places, Swami sometimes says that, like, oh, you don't need to do japa and namasmara and, and or just you know that kind of thing. But then, in, in order to think of God constantly, you do need to do those things. I think Swami Swami uses the word akkara ledu. That's the word Swami has used. Um, there is no essential it, it, that they are not as essential as this. So when Swami says something is not essential, um, I, I don't, I don't. Is, yes, yes, and please go ahead. Uh, Swami is saying, Samshain Chanakar Ledu. Chayanakar Ledu Kadu. Samshain Chanakar Ledu. No, I think. It is after, Auntie, uh, next to that, Dini Kesh. Dini Ki, Yes, Ramamo, Ye, Praptio, Ye, Yoga Karma, Yu, Chayanakar Ledu. Adon Sura, Swami. Yeah, yeah. So, both. So, so, see, what Swami is saying, see, 
those are not the essential activities mm. they may be ancillary activities which may help our main goal yeah. but the thing is i think there we can be choosy whatever we want but we should not give up the central activity which is thinking of the lord so if there are other activities uh, which are which are complementing or strengthening our main activity they are okay but yeah. so but none of them are as uh, essential as the central activity i think that's the way i would take it so the thing is for example if, if we are going on a particular path maybe some activity sort of helps us you know fix one of the challenges we are having in our main goal that is okay but then that doesn't have to you know supersede our central activity yeah is the way i understand so to the extent that they provide support for our central uh, effort i think that's okay but so i'm saying that's not as essential as if you are focusing on this central path well that is not essential is the way i would take it so like because some some sometimes says like even japa stuff you don't need to do japa so is that literally like so for some people they don't need to do japa even they <laughs> can't see, see not just now i was listening to a discourse where swami is telling um about some devotee who went to kashi uh, you know um, he only does namasmarana so when the you know so apparently there was a gold plate if anyone who doesn't think of the lord touches that gold plate turns into mud plate so if everyone touches it turns but so then the pujari asked why you don't you also touch he said i am not interested hmm. and he also told apparently no i don't do tapas you know i don't do japam nothing i just think of the lord you know now you know remember his name that's all he said but when that person touched the go the the plate actually shone further it, it did not turn into a mud plate so they are also that that person also then i don't do japa okay but the thing is he is always doing namasmarana thinking of the lord all the time so the thing is some generally when people say japa you sit in one place you take a japa mala then you you know count you know you have morning and evening you do japa and all that people do but sometimes we are so caught up in that activity that we forget god you know so swami is saying uh, this is needed but this should not take the center stage yeah. the japam is also needed because without japam without initially doing japam we may not be able to do constant namasmarana also mm-hmm. that may you know to so some of these practices are necessary yes. to strengthen our central sadhana activity is the way i understand uh, because sometimes people what happens you no know, you will say oh if we, we cannot give this up when you are doing namasmarana you know all of these have to be done also sometimes we are uh, we sort of uh, compulsively addicted to some of these sadhana i think that's what swami is telling is my understanding clear and at the same time for the purica purification of the mind these steps are very necessary for us to concentrate upon the lord and to make that namasmarana and as one pointedness we need these exercises small before that sairam i think swami has talked about it in the dhyana vahini also you know that we should not be given up until you know the end of your life or something like that some practices swami has said. so here the word shramma shramma that's referring to effort shramam shramma yo special effort you know that means exertion shramma means exertion exertion here yeah. so so you need not exert yourself too much kalyan sairam sakwanti yeah sairam in the dhyana vahini baba says meditation uh cleans your mind so to clean your minds and take your clogs uh, out of your mind um meditation jab all these things are important so in that way only you can train your mind to all the time uh, uh, think of god lord because that is the initial stage and later it will lead to 24/7 you can 
think of uh, Lord, even though you are active in other activities, still your mind at the back of the mind, you will be always thinking of uh, Swami. So it's uh, always, uh, the, it's a training ground for us. The Chaba, meditation, Namasmarana, all these things, it's a beginning training ground. Thank you, I think so. Thank you. Thank you very much, Auntie. Thank you very much. I think one more thing we should see, you know, when if we are continuously doing thinking of the Lord, then these are not needed. But you know, if we are neither we are not thinking of the Lord continuously, but giving this up, then that's just a problem. <laughs> you know, I think that's the way to look at it. You know, when Swami says it's akkaraledu, not mm. essential, he's only telling in terms of the main activity. Yeah. If we are not engaging the main activity and still giving up this, then that's a big problem. I think that's uh, if, if you're already doing the central activity, then these are not essential. I think that's the way I think we should take yeah. it. Maybe special effort is needed when we are doing some intense tapas or sadhana or such things, you know. Swami is, I think, uh, saying here that uh, in. Uh, Shrama, Shrama, Shrama is because of the stress that we are, uh, go through when we are taking a very intense sadhana. That's also not needed, Swami is saying. I think so, yes. Saira. But you know, Swami is saying it is mm. enough if the mind is always fixed on Paramatma. Paramatma. Swami is yes, saying that's enough mm. if you think, but you know, that's the biggest challenge. <laughs> no, Kalyani was asking about stress, you know. Where is the yes. necessity? Stress. That's what I, I think. Yes, is. yes, Auntie. Yes, yes. Because the, just after that statement, no special effort is needed. Then he's saying it is enough if you the mind is. He fixed up. Yeah. Uh, yes, Brother Thasan. Yes, I am, Brother. So when we studied the Dhyagana, you know, Dhyana Vagini, Swami said that Tabas uh, meditation is a royal path. But here Swami is saying that we have to follow a lot of practice and everything. Here Swami is saying, just think about me all that time before you go into work. Just think, Swami, I'm going to work. Where are you driving? Okay, Swami, I'm driving. Before eating, just think about him. Then you can be a full time devotee. Then that time, Swami is saying here that He will give the, He will take you out from the delusion and He will purify the mind. But it may take a longer time to go to moksha. But, but this is a steady path. So if you want a uh, uh, royal path, you have to dedicate discipline and everything, sit in a one place. You have to do a lot of things, but you don't have time for that one. At least if you do slowly, and you will reach to the path. Thank you, Brother Sairam. Sairam, Brother, thank you. Okay, if everyone is okay, then shall we move on? If it's okay, could we? At this, Arjuna put in a query. He said, Krishna, I do not quite understand the meaning of what you call jnana. Is it the knowledge learned through the ear from the teacher? Or is it the knowledge culled from the Shastras? Or is it the knowledge imparted by those rich in actual experience? Which among these liberates man from bondage? Krishna replied, the types of knowledge you mentioned now are all useful at some stage or the other of one's spiritual development. But by none of them can you escape the cycle of birth and death. That which releases you is known as Anubhava Jnana, the knowledge that you yourself experience. That alone can help you to be free. The teacher can be of some help in the process, but he cannot show you your real self. 
you have to visualize it yourself. Besides, you have to be free from vices like envy. Then only can you be called a Purna Jnani, one who has attained full Jnana. He who has faith in this Jnana, who is devoted in acquiring it and who is full of yearning to earn it, only such a person can realize me. He must be free from envy. Besides, he must be earnest, steeped in Shraddha, steady faith. Earnestness is essential even for the performance of the smallest act by man. No man alone, not man alone, but bird and beast, worm and virus, all have to be earnest to succeed. When you have no earnestness or shraddha in the act, you cannot gather the fruit. Okay. Um, Swami is, I think, highlighting the importance of shraddha. So maybe we'll read the Telugu if uh, it's okay. And yeah. Saira. <clears throat> In Telo, Arjunudu, Krishna, Nana Managa Nako Artham Kavatam Ledu. Then Arjuna said, Krishna, I don't understand what you mean by Nana. Achar Yula Mukantaramana, Binna Tuvanti Vishayamu Leka, Shastramula Andundun Andu. Shastamulo andu, undunadio leka, Anubhak nani nundi, Savanam chasinada. So he's asking about three things. He's asking, is it knowledge that we hear from the mouth of the teacher, or is it what is uh, taken from the Shastras or scriptures, or is it uh, lis listening to people who have already experienced? Yeah. These are three things. Are the, are the, does jnana relates to any one of these? He is asking. In the low, then in jnana manduru. Among these, which is called jnana? Yeti jnana mulabinchina, bhavanda mochana mukaluguna, kalugunu. Which jnana, when obtained, we will be able to re be released from the bondage of this existence? Karuninchi, telupumu, ani prarthinchinadu. Please kindly. Teach me or explain to me. Yeah. Uh, thus, Arjuna uh, pleaded with Krishna. Andulaku Paramatmudu Itlananam. So the Paramatman said this. Answer this. Arjuna, we know. Nivu Telipina Anniyo, Anniyo, Aya Samayamunaku, Avasarmulaina Gnanamulekani. Arjuna, listen. Whatever you have uh, mentioned, each of them may be required at some stage or other as uh, they as jnana. They are the jnana required at different stages. Okay. But from this knowledge, you will not be able to uh, distance yourself from the bondage of existence. Uh, what does Swami say? Avasaramulai Nagnanamura. What does English translation there? Um, of, see, he's saying that say they are mentioned are useful. That's the translation. Avasaramulai Nagnan. Sorry. Deni ni telisukoni na manulu, janana maranamuru pumugu, samsara bandamundi, vimuktu lukagaro. So, uh, which jnana? By acquiring which uh, man uh, can escape from the bondage of yeah. the existence. Birth and death. Janana marana birth, and, oh, yeah. Yeah. birth and death. The mm -hmm. existence which is uh, for, which is a result of birth and death. Yeah. In the form of birth and death. Yeah. That is experiential wisdom. Ati Anuvak Nana Mukalavare, Bhavanda Mulundi, Duramai, Mukshaku, Arhalu Kagalaru. Only those who have obtained that uh, experiential knowledge can distance themselves from the bondage of existence and will be eligible for attaining liberation. Shastra Nanamu, Acharyuladwara Shramano Chesina Kunta Sahai Karle. 
kani so uh, scriptural knowledge or knowledge which gained by listening to the teachers they are of use to some extent in aiding but nijakaramano chupinchaleru they will not be able to show you the real self real form anubhava gnanam tho paatu asuya rahitudai with experiential wisdom one should be free from jealousy or envy parama parama rahasyamaina aatmata aatma tattvamunu evudu telusukonano vaade paripurna gnani ani telipochunu so krishna says uh, one who is without envy and understanding this the most uh, secret knowledge of the atma principle and knowing that such a person will become a complete jnani thus uh, it can it can be stated that's what krishna says uh, there we are stopping you know yes aunty that's where um... i think the avasaramu in the i think they have said useful at different stages but and avasaram means it's essential at different stages maybe better translation aunty you know Mm, yes, avasar bolay na dhanam. Yeah, for the for the particular situation, yes, a, at different stages, dhana uh, is required. I think uh, we read a little more in English, right? Oh, Shraddha also we have read. Aunty, we have to go oh. a little further. మానవులు a task cannot be accomplished by human beings sorry i'm Manu, sorry i'm sure no. that that's being said as earnestness or is it another yeah he is translated as earnestness shuddha that that's why it's translated shuddha is determined is earnest effort okay. you know you can say that okay determined earnest effort can we say faith arun i think that's also used aunty but uh, it, i think swami means more than just more than Shraddha yoga pandrada na means you have to do it with you have to do something with a lot of determination also with sincere effort sincere effort i think sincere effort Shraddha leka ye chinna karyamano kudanu manavulu sadhinchaleru without that attitude of shraddha even a small activity cannot be completed by human beings manavule kaadu ee krimi keetadulu pashu pakshi mrugadulu kudanu karyamulu sadhinchalevu without this uh, quality not only human beings even animals birds and small insects yeah, will, yeah, not be, will not be able to do anything you need too much shraddha leka chesina dani palamunainano andukonaleru shraddha leka chesina dani chesina dani palamunainano andukonaleru so if one does not perform something with shraddha they will never be able to enjoy the fruits of that activity oka vela palam kudanu labinchina adi shuddhamuga nainano undi undadu even sometimes even if they attain some fruits it will not be uh, pure shraddha intati mahat mahattaramainadi this uh, shraddha is uh, so uh, uh, exalted or it's, it's very important anti very the some other word mahattaramaina di supreme supreme okay you can say so great supreme great supreme yeah adi leni di shuddha palamunu etti vaadunu pondaledu without that no one will be able to obtain a, a pure fruit so without shraddha nobody can achieve swami is using the word shuddha phalamu 
சுத்த பழமும் பியூர் ஃப்ரூட் ரியல் ஃப்ரூட் சுத்த பழமும் யூ கெனாட் அட்டைன் தட் ரியல் ஃப்ரூட் ரியாலிட்டி <laughs> So when it says without shraddha you cannot attain the real um or the pure fruit that means what what does that mean <laughs> so shuddha is considered uh, a quality of sattva as reality as anti said you know so swami refers to the brahman as shuddha sattva the sattva which is shuddha uh, so it is that is a real reality our atmic reality is shuddha sattva Uh, so that is the fruit jnana palamo in tamil they will say mm. and this to add to what brother said sai ram should it could be what i am interpreting is without any envy jealousy you know all those vices you should you pure like a should ghee <laughs> without <laughs> any you know you eat should coconut oil or no. whatever which has oh, no <laughs> no nothing so it's like without any jealousy or envy so should the fully refined you know sister refined also okay. yes <laughs> yes refined ghee when it says um determine we said determined earnest effort is it like a good translation for shraddha in this case i think so kalyani you know that's the way I, you know i understand but uh, anti is anything else can, can be anti also said faith you know uh, faith is not just normal faith it's unshakable faith also shraddha you can say there is no equivalent word for shraddha yeah even baba shri baba the shraddha sabur he says you know so chumpa uh, enam like um when it says animals even have shraddha um like they're just following their instinct and doing actions according to their instinct right <clears throat> why why is it that they have shraddha Oh. So I think Swami is telling if there's no concentration, nothing can be achieved. <laughs> Full attention, concentration, earnest effort, sincerity. Even if animals don't apply that to whatever they are doing, they will also not succeed. Okay, it's uh, yes, Prabhu Dasan, you would like to. Yeah. Um. If you want to put any other words, so we can think about. You suppose we have take interest. So if we are teaching this Bhagavad Gita, we have to take some interest. Then only we can understand the essence. Same thing. If we take uh, uh, animals, even if we take an uh, ant, it goes in that uh, particular line, and take the food, and they go. So everyone's working hard towards their goal. that kind of when we are studying we have the faith for sarata or when we have interest to achieve the determination that i will achieve that that kind of thing i think so thank you brother thank you very much brother thank you concentrated effort can we say yes santi concentrated effort also yes Concent- I think concentration is also a good uh, translation. But, yeah. Yeah, I think they are used to much steady faith, but I don't know whether that's. Uh... Mm-hmm.
why is of all the vices like jealousy is the one that's kind of um it seems like a hallmark I guess of the of a nyani to not have jealousy yeah so um among the six enemies Matsurya, which is the end last, you know, which is the fi the final fr fruit of what you start with envy. Uh, you know, you hate somebody. Uh, the Richard Varga and the six qualities. Kamakrodha uh, Mohalova, Mother Matsurya. Yeah, Matsurya is the final one. Okay. So that uh, as soon as we start with the Kama, we will end up in Matsurya without fail. Okay, because as soon as the desire comes, uh, one of the product will be matsarya. The desire itself is the result of matsarya. Because generally we want something only because somebody has it. So it is a positive manifestation of jealousy, which will become a very deep envy if uh, our desires are not fulfilled. So I think envy is, without envy, there was no desire actually in this world. Uh, some, you know, envy at the budding stages is uh, desire. Yes, I'm just funny. You know, here I want to uh, actually bring something my father always used to tell us. People are not unhappy or they are sad or they are in pain because they don't have. They are in pain and they are unhappy because other people have. So this is just to share, he used to always, you know, growing up, used to tell us that, you know, you have to be content. And of course, Swami has, you know, has his own way of teaching. But just something to share that we all are, as we said, the comparison, the desire is not because we don't have it. It's just because I don't have those. Swami uses the word, where purugu. So Swami says, a jealousy, envy is something like a, a pest, which actually attacks from the root. You don't even know that it exists. Suddenly one day you are dead. You know, so jeal jealousy is a very difficult to identify also. Let me use this to... Okay. Shall we... So sorry, it does, Swami said that you have to be free from jealousy first before you get the experiential wisdom? Mm -hmm. Or is it the other way around? Once you have the wisdom, then you'll be free from jealousy. I think Swami is giving us three essential requirements. First, he says we need to have the jnana, anubhavak jnana. If once you have anubhavak jnana, you also should be free from envy. Once you have that, you also should have shraddha. So he has given these three as essential prerequisites for us to attain moksha. So first is Anubhava Jnana, uh, then no absence of Asuya, then he says we need to have Shraddha. I think that's the order. He doesn't say the Anubhava Jnana will result in an asu uh, absence of Asuya, he doesn't say. Okay. It has to be independently cultivated is what I understand. Others can comment on it as well. Can you just retranslate this line that uh, I think not the last paragraph, the one before this last line of the um, second last paragraph that we read? Anubhavak um, yeah. yeah. okay. patu Along with Anubhavak Jnana, Anubhavak Jnana Muto patu. Asu here today, Parama Rahasya Mena Atma Tattvamanu, Yehudu Telusukonu, Vade Paripurna Gnani, Ani Talpavachanu. 
పచ్చును అనుభవ జ్ఞానంతో పాటు అసూహ్య రహితుడై పరమ రహస్యమైన ఆత్మతత్వను ఎవరు తెలుసుకున్నవాడు సో దేర్ ఆర్ త్రీ థింగ్స్ హి ఇస్ గివింగ్ ఇన్ హియర్ ఇట్స్ అనుభవ జ్ఞానం వితౌట్ అసూహ్య దెన్ దెన్ థర్డ్ వన్ ఇస్ అ పర్సన్ షుడ్ అండర్స్టాండ్ హూ ఇస్ ద తత్వం యు నో దట్ ఇస్ our real self has to be atma tattvam anu over the who will who knows who finds out that secret principle supreme principle of atma and for that then swami goes on to say along with not only absence of ashruya you need to have shraddha so i think shraddha is needed to understand the atma tattva is the way i understand anubhava jnana is your experiential knowledge but along and with that without any are... without envy anubhava jnana without envy and shraddha knowing, knowing the yes and the knowing the atma tattva i think for that only you need shraddha so it is i think it's like this uh, you know uh, we learn some recipe we have gone and tasted the, uh, you know how the recipe in final product is that's all good that well and good that means we have know the knowledge how to make it we also know how it tastes we have experienced it there's no there's no problem then swami says we should be free from jealousy because the jealousy can cause a lot of harm for our existence so swami says that has to be fully kept away you know we have to be free from jealousy then he says now that you have achieved this you have to make effort shraddha with that effort you search and find the inner the secret hidden truth of the atmic principle once we understand that then then only we can be called paripurna jnani that's a complete jnani is the way i understand swami says which is similar to what we encountered in sande anivarin i don't know whether you know swami is mm-hmm. talking about jnani you know the final stage is also jnani then i think we had a similar discussion so is a jnani starting out in jnani at the end also is jnani mm-hmm. uh, to end to become a full complete jnani you have to start out with jnana anubhava jnana but the anubhava jnana does not fully blossom until we find we reach the final stage it swami says knowing the real true self which is the hidden the secret has to be uh, one has to know so it's same thing it swami has said there as well as here and here in the first paragraph when we read devini telisukonina manavulu janana marana roopamugu samsara bandhamu nundi vimukturu kagalaro adiye anubhava gnanamu knowing that knowing that knowledge which releases from uh, uh, releases as from bondage of birth and death that is the real knowledge that is the gnani the one who knows that knowledge is a gnani so he swami has used jnani as initially then he uses the word paripurna jnani mm. yeah. okay so Uh, so he is the fullness of jnana is attained at the end of those three but starting off itself is janvava jnana itself is knowing that by which knowing which you you can free yourself this anubhava jnana is experiential knowledge yes i think auntie because experience see one is cerebrally comprehending something but you know okay we know okay atma god is one you know but swami is experientially you should feel that you are one with god yeah. you know just like you know we learn from the shastra scriptures uh, aham brahmasmi but unless and until you be, feel that you experience that aham brahmasmi i am that brahman it will not be anubhava gnana oh, it's only a scriptural knowledge that's all i think we also have issues you know when we tell you know god is everywhere mm but you know the, we can all make that statement but 
do we live as if god is around us you know in everything uh, you know that experience is not there you know anything which we take do we think swami is in that also uh, when we look at the food you know when we walk on the street when we look at the trees are we experiencing god everywhere no not necessarily uh, you know we may attempt we may imagine but you know it's not a constant experience at all times even think like you know god is everywhere uh, even if you think god knows everything but we still go and tell god something you know god you know i am having this problem <laughs> you know <laughs> brother yes uh, sairam brother um, you have mentioned about starting with jnani with the experience of thing right so where is the envy then come because you have to eliminate envy then shraddha come right to make it as a jnani at this uh, like a, a moksha stage so um, so you start with jnani understanding yourself uh, as a uh, like a, you see um, as a, uh, you feel like a, you are a part of a divine or a spark of divine but then you where well, i'm trying to understand once that realization come where is the envy part uh, you have a, do you have an, a kind of an example or just to explain where is the envy going to come for these kind of people um, i don't know if anyone would like to share any examples of so jnani having envy how did it come to be i think that's a question to staruna sir she wants illustrations yes santi sir could please go ahead sai ram before reaching a jnani stage you have to get uh, rid of all your vices that's why baba says free from vices like envy that is one of the out of the six is only picking Uh, envy, but he is telling others too. Other advices also. In the other way, he Baba says you have to get rid of all those things. Uh, for that, meditation helps you. So Nyani will not have. Uh, <clears throat> he would have got rid of all these vices. Then only he can have a real self experience. He cannot have self a real self experience. when he is having all the negative vices in me in him thank you that's my understanding yeah sairam thank you aunty anyone else would like to sh- share anything i guess then 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 maybe i will speak you know sister you asked about you know how can a jnani have asuya uh other examples you asked yes yes brother after becoming a jnani only not uh, the uh, person aspiring um, a de- um, a devotee or anything just uh, becoming a jnani and where's the envy come then uh, because after rid of the envy only you can may uh, uh, take up the shraddha to be a jnani so yes. i'm trying to understand where's that envy is come very, very good Thank sister you. so you need examples okay yes, so swami, swami has always provided examples so this the example is vishwamitra see vishwamitra was a king who once he went to vashishta's ashrama he was he saw kamadenu there the wishful fulfilling cow he wanted it and he couldn't take it so he was angry then he took he said okay as a king i couldn't win this i will beat you in your own game Okay, so that is how he started in the spiritual path itself. So he did a lot of tapas. Uh, he studied a lot. Uh, he realized, I mean, he attained the Nani state. Okay, uh, he but uh, no one was recognizing him as Brahma Rishi. Okay, a Rishi who has reached the state of Brahman, who has understood Brahma. What was the problem for him was. he started off on the spirituality path itself as a competition so there was a vestige of that asuya that jealousy which remained in him okay but until that was eradicated he could not rise so it so happened at one point he was so mad 
with vasishta he wanted to you know he wanted to kill him murder him so apparently he took a big dagger and he was waiting behind hiding somewhere uh, so that he can kill vasishta you know to that extent he was driven can you believe uh, vishwamitra uh, he was so he attained such great levels of wisdom and jnana acquired it through experience but still that one thing which vestige vasana in him was causing him problem so he was waiting and um, then some as he was waiting people were talking to vasishta was not alone and to someone when somebody asked then vasishta was praising vishwamitra apparently yeah. you know such oh. a great person so what he did know that word of vasishta talking to somebody else completely removed his asuya he threw that dagger away he went and ran and fell at the feet of vasishta okay, oh, okay. because that the asuya even even that vanished because of the grace of vasishta the the mouth of vasishta was so great so then vasishta picks him up and says brahma rishi vishwamitra why are you falling at my feet okay so that's a classic example of you know uh, oh, so it's a, it's like a ravana too am i right he also yes, did so uh, much tapas and oh, okay but yes, he yes, had yes, that end okay okay. Down the line, so, yes. okay after they are realizing also so it comes from vasana right it comes from <laughs> even though the knowledge everything they gained even that something in within them it's proud of it has to be removed completely yes okay okay, okay. thank you sir, so much last yeah. example that's the example which came yes. to me yes 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 thank you thank you saira so how can we overcome jealousy with the grace of a guru so nothing we can do sadhana namaskar <laughs> meditation <laughs> I guess whenever we have any desire, it stems from jealousy. You said some some form of envy. You would have seen something somebody having, then only will say, "Okay, maybe why not me?" Every effort in human effort comes only from that. All desires come from there. We see somebody, and then we are. You know, we use good words also. You know, we'll say we are inspired. you know we we sugar coat that very well positive way of <laughs> so brother the ambition, envy for ambition you know things yes sir yes sorry yes. sorry sorry so for the envy for vishwamitra is from the desire of what please uh, to he wants to be the like um uh, he wanted to beat vasishta like, he wanted to beat vasishta oh he wanted to be Okay, that is, that first is the first sadhana sister. First sadhana. Right? Okay, that is the sadhana. Okay, in, great. In Tamil, we say, you know, in Tamil, we say, "Was sister Vaiyala Brahmarshi?" Our da sula. Was sister Vaiyala Brahmarshi? He wanted to get that from my sister. Okay, so <laughs> okay. Tamil, Tamil, we say. So that, so he want to be a like a like a sister. That is the desire that created the envy. Okay. okay. So the problem that, for Vishwamitra was there was only one Brahma Rishi who can acknowledge that he is Brahma Rishi, but he was competing with that Brahma Rishi, and he <laughs> didn't know how to get him to acknowledge, and that was his challenge for him. Yes, sir, Saint Aunty Yasa, could please go ahead. Yes, yes, Sai Ram, uh, because Vasudha had the a cow which was uh, given like Kama Denu, he wanted that cow to be given to him. So when Vasista refused, then he became wild. There was a war. There was a fight between them. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. See, Not if you look, if I you feel. Look, yes, Aunt. Please. Sairam, Sairam. Not only jealousy, even uh, krodha, that is anger, also can bring down an agnani to that level. Uh, for example, Parashurama. 
we can take the example of Parashrama who was so full of anger when Rama, uh, Sri Rama broke that uh, Shiva Danusso. Yes, Brother Dasa. Yes, I am, Brother. So, Auntie brought that uh, with the anchor. So, you have to be careful with the anchor because the anchor will come to your heart. It will ask you a small place to stay today. But when you allow the anchor to stay in a small corner, it will ask you to stay on the night. Then, it will following day, it will ask, I'm going to stay for one week. <laughs> then eventually it will capture your whole place. So anchor, you should not allow even a small person in your heart. Even the Viswamitra, first time they, he went to pick up, uh, because he does lot, uh, lots of jatna. Whenever he does the jatna, the asuras come and disturb. So he, and he went to, first time he went to Dasarada, then he wants to, uh, take uh, Rama and Lakshmana for guard the Jatna. Because then others ask, you have all the power. Then why don't you kill them with your power? Then Viswam, uh, then uh, Viswamitra told, if I want to kill them, I can do it, but I have to get anchor. Once I get the anchor, there's no purpose of doing the Jatna. Then he brought Rama and Lakshmana, they guard the Jatna and they kill uh, Asuras, who were disturbed in the Jatna, then Jatna went very well. And this is the story too. Thank you, Sai Ram. Sai Ram, you're a Sakwa, do you have something to say? Yes. Yes. I, I am wondering, Brahm, Brahma Rishi and all these people, they could control the vices. And but they are called uh, Brahma Rishi, Jnani. Then what, in what place are we? <laughs> just ordinary, simple human beings. Maybe just plain Rishi, auntie. can be clever. I don't know, you can make us laugh. <laughs> uh, what else to say? <laughs> You know, the thing is, um, Brother Dasan was telling about anger. See, actually, all these qualities, um, Krishna has actually explained nicely, and Swami has seen the Gita Vahini also has spoken about it earlier, how all these qualities, anger, hatred, all that come. Actually, they all come from uh, uh, asanas, Sangat, Sanjayate, Kama, that is with association with the world. We get developed desire. From desire, when it is thwarted, we get angry. If you cannot attain what you wish for, you will get anger. But once you, if you succeed in getting it, then you develop what's called lobha. You don't want to share it with the other people. Attachment. Okay. You don't want to share with the other one. You want to have it only for yourself. Then what happens after some time, because you feel that I have got it all, you get mother. You get pride. You think I have it all, you know, I don't care about the world. That's mother. Then, even then you will get matsari after that also. When you have everything, if somebody has something little also, you don't want them to have. Uh, you know, that is the problem of mother. Then that becomes matsari. So, but ultimately everything again boils down to the same thing. We we, we, we are in this world and we see something somebody having then we think why not us that's the way desire so desire is ultimately at the beginning point um, the word indriya is also swami is saying because sang, sang, swami said sangha you know association is what causes desire Okay, if uh, anyone else would like to share something or
Shall we move on? I guess, unless we are all. Okay. Arjuna, I am the witness. Through me, this prakriti, this conglomeration of the five elements called prapancha, all these movable and immovable objects are formed. Through me, as the cause, the prapancha behaves in various ways. Fools who cannot understand me as the highest principle and as a master of all the elements whose will they have to obey, take me to be just a man. Some great men reverently meditate on me as Brahman. Others worship me under various names and in various forms. Some others worship me through Jnana Yajna and Atma Yajna. Whatever the name, whatever the form of worship, I am the recipient, for I am the goal of all. I am the only one. There is no other. I myself become the worshipped through my many names and forms. Not only this, I am the fruit of all actions, the bestower of the fruit, the basis, the prompter, the promoter of all. Why recount and repeat? I am the force behind the birth, existence, and death of everything and of every life. I am the birthless, deathless cause. Realize me, the primal cause. That indeed is moksha. He is the jivan mukta, liberated even while alive, who attains that moksha. Therefore, Arjuna, if one yearns to become a jivan mukta, to attain moksha, he must accomplish some simple disciplines. That is to say, he has to eradicate fully the attachment to the body. Thank you. Auntie, shall we read the Telugu also, I guess? Yeah. Sairam. Yeah. Bhava, Sakshi Matru Duguna Chetane Prakruti. E. Jangama Stavar Mulato, Kudina Prapancha Maguchunadi. So, brother in law, I am, um, I am just a witness alone, and through me, this prakriti, the nature, this uh, conglomeration of Jangama Stavara, immovable, immovable, yeah, immovable, and immovable uh, prapancha is formed. Is formed. E. Hetu Chetane, Nana Vidamuluga, Prapanchmo. Through this cause alone, all these various five, five elemental made uh, nature is uh, moving on. Pravarti is moving Prav on. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Itti Sarvottamamaina Tidiyuno. That's the supreme state. Say, all the elements I'm the I'm the one who is who appoints master of all elements appoint appointing 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 all, all the uh, all the elements Nana Tatuma Agu Nana Tatwa Munu Telisukona Leni Mudulu Not understanding this uh, manifold principle as uh, fools. Nanu Samani Manishnega Talchusunaru. They think that I am a uh, normal Kam human being. Ordinary Kuntaman, human being. Kontamandi Mahanielu Nanu Brahmamuga Upas in Chusunaru. But some uh, Great men, great people, uh, great people. Um, they worship me as Brahman. Mari Kontamandi Nane Ver Ver Rupanamulto Kolchishunaru. Then there are others who pray to me using different names. Names and forms. 
ఇంకా కొందరు జ్ఞాన యజ్ఞమనియో ఆత్మ యజ్ఞమనియో ఆయా రూపముల ఉపాసించుచున్నారు then there are few others who in the name of jnana yagna or atma yagna they different forms they worship they worship me yeah evaratlu upasinchinano evaru evare peru e peru pettinano paramaatmudaina nenu maatrame danni andukonchunnano whatever name people use to pray to me whatever name they keep uh, i who the paramaatman is the alone receiving all these prayers nenu tappa marevaru leru there is none other than me me nene nana roopa naamamulato aya upasana sthanamunu cheruchunnanu i myself uh, taking different forms and names when different worships are performed i uh, reach them intiye kaadu sarva karma palamunu పల ప్రదాతను సర్వమునకు అధిష్టానమును వేయటికి ఉత్పత్తి స్థితి లయములు మూడింటిని స్థానమైన వాడు నేనే నాట్ ఓన్లీ దట్ ఫర్ ఆల్ ద ద ఫ్రూట్స్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ ద యాక్షన్స్ ద వన్ హూ గ్రాంట్స్ ఆల్ ద ఫ్రూట్స్ వన్ హూ ఇస్ రెస్పాన్సిబుల్ అండ్ హాస్ అథారిటీ ఓవర్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ ఇన్ దిస్ మ్యానిఫోల్డ్ ద క్రియేషన్ as uh, preservation and preservation and destruction for all these three i am the uh, person sthanam sthanam aina vaadu i am the one i am the one i am i am the place where all these three things take place etti nashamu leni kaaranamunu nene aina ainanu i am this cause uh, which is without a death, death. అట్టి మోక్ష ప్రాప్తిని అనుభవించుటే జీవన్ ముక్తి అని అందరు when someone obtains this moksha and experiences it that person is called uh, that state is called jivan mukti kana baba jivan muktudu kavalnanna o brother in law if one you want to become a jivan mukta or moksha manu pandavalnanna or if you want to obtain liberation కొన్ని సాధనములు సలుపవలను సర్టన్ సాధనాస్ హావ్ టు బి పర్ఫార్మ్డ్ సర్వ సంఘ పరిత్యాగులు కావలను వన్ హస్ టు బికమ్ హూ హస్ గివెన్ అప్ ది ఆల్ అటాచ్మెంట్స్ అండ్ అసోసియేషన్స్ అనగా దేహాభిమానమును నిర్మూలము చేసుకొనవలను దట్ మీన్స్ వన్ హస్ టు కంప్లీట్లీ గివ్ అప్ బాడీ ఐడెంటిఫికేషన్ అటాచ్మెంట్ టు ది బాడీ <clears throat> i know swami has just taken us so far, you know sakwandi was telling we are brahma rishi or jnana rishi <laughs> <laughs> swami is now taking us and explaining to us jeevan mukta state uh, mm-hmm. so. um in second paragraph not only this i am the fruit of all actions the bestower of the fruit and the basis the prompter the promoter of all here that question of bestower of fruit i have a doubt uh, arun you see according to our karma whatever actions we have done in the past uh, rewards or punishment is given to us according to that um, so he, if, if does krishna the paramatma does he he is he is the one who bestows all this or our karmas automatically they give us our fr- the fruits i think even the karmas i think aunty mm. even if you sow the seed without god's help it will not uh, sprout and grow into a crop 
So, okay. so I think even our karmas, if they are thriving and are going to bear some fruit, whether it's good or bad, without God's agency, without God's agency, I don't think we can obtain those fruits. But you know, more than that, he's telling he is the fruit also. <laughs> he is the fruit. Yeah. He's telling, you know, he is the fruit and he is the giver of the fruit. Both he's telling. Okay. So I think to some extent, even whether we have bad or good fruits, it's all God's prasadam because it's God himself. I think that's, you know, so he mentioned that he is the fruit before he says, I bestow the fruit. He's because he's the one who can give himself. But I don't think we, we realize that we are enjoying the karma fala, which is God himself. We think some fruits are bad, some fruits are good. And uh, so I think that's my understanding. So, so uh, there is the agency of the Lord by when he gives the karma pala. Yes. But one, one in somewhere, you know, he says, I'm not the karma paladatha. He says that. No, he, I, don't, I think he doesn't cause suffering. He says he's just distributing the fruits. You know, he is not so, the giver uh, of problems. Uh, distributing of the fruits. All the fruits are only because of our actions. Yes. But uh, he, he sees to it that you are given this one, you are given this one. <laughs> yes, but he is just saying, <laughs> what you have asked only, I have given. I have not yeah. given anything else. Uh, uh. But uh, brother, as uh, Swami said, if you eradicate the fully attachment of uh, the body conscious, so then you don't affect by the fruit of action, right? That's what it is. Mean. Yes. So whether whatever it is given to you, you take it as a prasada. That's all. Thank you. Sorry. Whether it is good or bad, everything yeah. is... Yeah. The good or bad, we will think when we have a body attachment only. We don't have it, then we don't think. We'll take it. And, you know, take it as a... And uh, yeah, think over it, ponder over it to understand. <laughs> that's the that's a part we have no mind. <laughs> First of all, we have to reach that stage where yeah, you know, that's don't a... have deha vimanam. So, so eradicate don't... eradicate the fully attachment of the body. We already uh, learned that the body is given as an instrument to realize it. Mm, but that is that is in the sense of. Um, like really? that I want to understand a little more uh, to now to uh, um, uh, remove the attachment from the body, right? You have to take care of the body in order to achieve him too. So it's two different things, <laughs> but it's a subtle difference. That's how I see it. Thank you. Thank you. I, am. I, I need some clarification on the first paragraph. Some others worship me through jnana yajna and atma yajna. Can you explain to me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, some worship me as Anyone would like to uh, share? Yes, Brother Dasan. Yes, I am, Brother. Jnana means, uh, my understanding is you learn the Vedas and you learn all the Sastras. And from that, you're trying to uh, reach the goal. Atma Yakna means you self realize and understand yourself. I am the Atma. I am the deathless. I am the beginningless. I am the endless. Uh, I am the changeless. Then you find your uh, Atma inside yourself. Thank you. Sai Thank you. I think, uh, yes, uh, I think the. Auntie, you know, Brother Dasan has uh, explained nicely. You yajna here does not mean, you know, you do a fire yajna. Uh, it is, you know, any form of worship is also yajna. Uh, mm -hmm. If you do japam also, that is also yajna. Mm -hmm. uh, so, any, any form of prayer, effort, sadhana, which you offer to the Lord as worship, I think would, can be called yajna. So, Pursuing okay. jnana itself is a jnana yajna, as uh, Brother has nicely. Thank you. Study Thank of you. scriptures. Yeah. Study of scriptures is also a, a jnana yajna. Or yes. sharing your knowledge with others is also jnana yajna. 
just like what uh, we are all doing with the help of Arun, uh, it is Jnana Yajna, what we are doing now. Yeah, what we are doing is Jnana Yajna, yes. We are treating the sadhana, you know, come and study, hopefully through this knowledge, it improves. <clears throat> Uh, very nice. Thank you, Aunt. Thank you. Sorry, can you just repeat um, what what is Atma Yajna again? So, so Jnana Yajna is you know pursuing Jnana. Atma Yajna, as Brother Dasan explained, Atma Vichara. You know, who am I? You know, people engage. You know, who am I? But you know that koham koham. You know that is you know. For example, Ramana Maharshi, you know, he always said, inquire who you are. What is this Atman? You know, you search that Atman and that itself becomes a sadhana activity. You know, they meditate on it. Uh, am I this body? I am not the body. Am I the mind? No, I am not the You know, that kind of inquiry, Atma Vichaira. Uh, so that is Atma Yajna. It's a worship. You search, for, search, you search, the Lord, search for who you are. As an offering to the Lord, you know, that is simply a prayer, that's a sadhana. Uh, so I think that's. Brother Dasan, is that uh, what? Yeah, and then after that, yeah. uh, after that, you surrender everything yeah. to the Lord. Then... Atma Nivedana. Atma Nivedana. Thank, uh, thank you. Once you identify who you are, that also you just offer, which is what Bali Chakravarti did. Uh, Swami says, completely offered himself uh, to the Lord. Any onam discourse, Swami talks about this. You know, the Atmani Vedanam, but. Uh, and Swami also says, you know, you are born as Koham and you should attain the state of Soham <coughs> before you die. You know, that, uh, that also Swami. Brother, what did you say? We born as? Oh, sorry, sister. We are Sanskrit sister, Sanskrit koham, kaha aham. Who am I? Oh. Apparently, when the baby bo is born, it's cries. No, Swami says the baby cries because asking the question koham, who am I? Who am I? Okay. So when we are born, we apparently that question is there. Who am I? Where have I come? Who are all these people? That's why the baby is scared of everyone around and he cries apparently. <laughs> Who am I? And Swami says, before we die, we should find the answer. Who we are. Who we are is Soham, that we are divine. I am that. I am, I am that. Okay, thank you. That, that is the journey of life. Atma Yajna. Koham and Soham. Of course, we, people shouldn't think Soham means Shoka in Tamil. Shokam is called Soham. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, um, so, brother, the see, um, so. You eradicate fully attachment to the body. That means um, Swami has given as an instrument the body to realize himself. That is two different things. Am I right? Yes. So that you use as an instrument only. Not attached to it. Okay. 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 Thank you. Swami's so, expectation is pretty high for us, you know. It's, it's, <laughs> so, Sairam brother, Swami's expectation is too high because that's what he taught to only Arjuna. But you are teaching more than 14 people. <laughs> it's a bigger, brother, we are first we have to. You remove that delusion you're suffering from. <laughs> so Thank you, is... Dasan. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. 
you know the line where it says sarva bhuta mulanu niyam in chunnat the that yes. one yeah you I, know we were struggling with the translation kalyani yeah. means all the bhutas even the elements have been given their, their job by the lord he tells appoints each of the elements to do something in this world also so that means the as a creator he will say okay water this is what your job is fire this is what your job is niyam in the means right appoint somebody to do a job appointing appoint in the english okay. translation it also says um, whose will they have to obey that is i think adhist uh, adhisthanam is sub substratum no. adhisthanam so in, uh, obey also you can say niyam is means the boss boss says appointed you know he is the employer okay you know that kind of a meaning i think they have taken for the translation but niyam in chemin to it's another meaning is one who establishes how somebody should function niyama means the way you should follow you understand so when you appoint somebody you tell him this is your job description this is what you are supposed to do you basically lay down the do's and don'ts which is niyama okay i think from that sense i think the tra translation is rules of niyam means rules also no yeah, some rules some. yeah, yeah. Rules. rules which you have to follow where it says uh, i think um there's none other than me i myself taking different forms and names when different worships are performed you said i reach them yeah yes pasana okay. chunano like the swami has used the word cheri chunano means oh. i will go and reach them i will you know i will yeah i will i will respond you know that kind of thing and if somebody calls out to me i i am the one who goes and meets them in tamil will anga poi cherndhen you know so god is going and reach uh, responding he is responding to respond. the request um is it okay to have jealousy for um like good things like like yeah yeah i i have heard it also i have heard it for example in academic field when you feel jealousy you will put forth more effort to become like that so i have heard that this is the best jealousy one can have <laughs> is to compete with the other person for uh, acquiring knowledge or well, even like uh, what is your real question is where where the jealousy you want to have it to, for the good reason do yeah, you I mean, for example yeah, yeah. Like, we sometimes they have like um even like competitions in um in SSE or for like oh like memorizing not here I, but i heard in like india and stuff like for memorizing slokas or gita you know, yeah. shlokas so, i mean that's kind of encouraging a bit of jealousy i guess but for a good reason tayam baba says you have to compete not with the others but you have to compete with your with own with yourself with your own achievement yeah, i, I can do better i can do better than other person that kind of uh, you are competing with your own self so sairam brother yes, but in yes, canada yes. Uh, sairam right in canada if you ask the kids comparing other person the kids will say why i should go there for other people but kalyan is correct other countries maybe they are doing that one but jealousy is not here if you ask the other kids they, they will tell us don't compare them <laughs> so that's brother they are missing the j yeah only laziness is there let's see correct <laughs> either you suffer from jealousy or you suffer from lazy yeah we had this experience when we talk about other kids name they say right away why are you comparing them <laughs> brother no where there shouldn't be jealousy even for the good reason i was a sister vasudha ahead of me sorry vasudha sister sorry sairam i was just saying that uh jealousy is jealousy it's a negative trait uh, perhaps what we mean is inspiration 
So you draw inspiration from somebody else uh, that you're turning your jealousy into a positive trait? Sublimating that, sublimating it. Very good, sister. See, I think in, in see some of these qualities, I think very nice point which sister Basida brought up. See, all these negative qualities also have a purpose. You know, that initial thought of, you know, looking at something and a tinge of envy. But the thing is, that should trigger some positive effort. After that, that trigger should be thrown away. I, I think that is the thing. You know, if you see something and you say, oh, that person has, which I don't have, that's okay to spur an activity. But as soon as the activity is spurred, after that, we should not hold on to that thing because then it becomes bad. Just like anger, you know, something, something somebody did, you are right away, the body's reaction is, so your mind's reaction is anger. So that is a reaction, but that should not stay on for very long time, then it becomes problem because it is natural in this world for mind to react in certain natural state, uh, maybe because of vasanas and things like that. But um, a wise person will not will know that he will make a supplement, turn it into a positive thing, as Sister Vasudha nicely explained, and then give up that negative trait. Uh, to that extent, I think it's okay to spur into act. Otherwise. People become so lazy, they don't do anything. They will say, it's okay, I will just, uh, you know, just relax. I think from that, pers uh, from that perspective, people say. Because the... Uh, this, uh, yes. Sorry, I, I don't agree. Because that's kind of body attachment. And you are, you are making a negative thing to crop up. Anger is uh, like, a, I can think as a tool to uh, sort the thing, but it's not supposed to be come in your state of mind to do anything. So I think I really don't agree. <laughs> Thank you, sorry. I'm just I don't, don't worry, sister. I won't compete with you. Brother, <laughs> you can compete with me. I won't compete with you. So that is the, that there's no jealousy, but still I'm going to compete within me. Okay. That's what it shows me. I, I'm just thinking. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. Sorry. Is anyone has something to say? I, I think, I think sister, I don't know. The point is, um, I think the jealousy can only be eliminated when we think we have the Lord with us. Then nothing in this world will be of attraction to us. See, when we don't have anything of superior nature, it is natural tendency for somebody to feel envy. For example, if you don't have something, if you don't have food, when you see somebody else eating, you will naturally feel, I'm hungry and suffering, that person has food. Okay, the thing is, you can call it jealousy, you can call it anything, but the thing is, the fact is, I lack something. But then, if I have all the food in the world, and if I think, you know, I can just, you know, food will appear as soon as I wish, if somebody is eating, we will not worry about it. So the thing is, the only way for us to overcome jealousy of all kinds is to have the Lord who is the repository of everything as someone whom we have access to. When we have that, there is no jealousy. There's no place for jealousy. Yes. But until, yeah. that, until we have that, uh, that conviction that the Lord is here, I don't uh, need anything in this world. If people can show anything, uh, we will not give any importance to that. Yeah, that is body okay. attachment gives you everything. Exactly, exactly. So you have to, that shouldn't crop up, that content is supposed to be there. And lack of anything, you have to believe that God will give you. Exactly. Thank you. Yes, Sister Shivani. 
I think you had to unmute, sister. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to look for the button. Sairam, it's just, um, you know, what we are discussing here. It reminds me of um, learning from Swami and then how he has said that you can learn from animals, from birds, detachment, and people, good people around you. Take one thing what you like and just sharing here that, I mean, you know, uh, in our science center, there are few women, those who wake up at Supravatam time and they do their own prayers before they go to work. And I'm one of those who, whenever I'll wake up, I'll pray to Bhagavan. So I guess whenever I think that way, I always think about them. Oh my God, they wake up at four o'clock. You know what? I should ins get inspired by them. So I, I'm working towards that. And there's one sister who has given up some of her you know, eating desires. So whenever I crave for that, oh, you know what? She has took that up. Now that's great. And I used to waste food. And I know my, my sister-in-law, she's so efficient saving food. So whenever I'm about to throw something, I said, no, how would she use this food? She will make smoothies. She will do. So it's something that you take something great from other people to get better and better. And eventually that becomes a part of you. Sairam. Sairam, sister. So you are blessed with a lot of good jealousy, sister. Oh, yes. <laughs> you too. I'm surrounded by you, all of you as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I can never compete with Arun. <laughs> yes, sportsmanship. He, he is something, he is something different. <laughs> he is a role model to all of us. Okay, okay. I think that's, I think we'll have to put a stop to this. <laughs> you have to drag me down so much. No, 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 it helps. It helps, brother. If you remember, once you share, yeah. take Bhagwan everywhere. And believe me, when I go small gather, past, I think you can recall where I lost my, you know, feelings, or you feel a little insecure because all of you know you people have or people don't have, but you you shared with me. Just take him and ask him to hold your hand, and that's really helped. Everywhere I go, I just say Bhagwan. Let me not slip. Just hold my hand. So, yes, I, I keep you in mind as well. So you are my one of good jealousy as well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All 14 people here. Yes. It's one of the jnani because, you know, thousands of people saw me created and how many people are sacrificing their time for us yeah. to teach. Just doing that. He, he has gone through a lot of experiences. But still... I think we are I studying it. He's Vahiri. giving the jnana dana for us. Thank you, brother. You know, you all, you all are such inspiration for... See, the, the reality is actually I am inspired by you all. The reality is Swami uh, gave the opportunity to be there and study and, you know, uh, learn from, you know, him on a, for a long period of time. Whether, you know, I, I understood the value or not, I, I, I don't think I... Under, understood the value that time but now when you look when you look at all of you the joy the love you have for what swami is it just inspires me uh, you know i think you know uh, when you all show so much dedication i i feel uh, i'm competing with you all <laughs> you know <laughs> because uh, you know i i can't lose the race anymore <laughs> it's a good competition it's a good competition that's the way Swami inspires each of us in different ways. Ultimately, he puts the right people to inspire us, I guess, you know, it's, that's all Swami is doing. Um, we are all same for any size, we are all same. He's the one who is teaching. He's the one who is making us all discuss, ask the questions, give the find, find the answer. Uh, see, I'm just pulling out of the, you know, or the you know whatever he have heard and remembered, it's all coming out only from what he has uh, given. So and you all are uh, uh, an excuse for me to you know remember, recollect, mm -hmm. and that, that's the way I see it. And it's it becomes mutually beneficial to all of us in our journey. So as Brother Dasan said, it's a jnana yajna. So that's. So it's 4 30. Oh, it's time fly. It's 4 30. Yeah. I think we can close the session for today.
I will miss you all next week. Uh, but uh, continue the journey and I will join you all in two weeks' time. Yes, brother, you will pray for us also that in the Pati. Yes, I will. I'll remember you all. Um, Thank so, you, Bhashya yeah. Manti, for helping us also. Ar Aruna for setting up this. Uh, oh, no, no, I am not. Uh, that is so good. Okay. So, Kuji, in a very, very little way, I'm, I'm trying to do. That's all. Okay. Swami will give me the strength and that uh, memory power to bring exactly okay. the things. Auntie, you have a great memory power. Auntie. No, no, no Baba. No. Auntie, yeah, no. so true. You, within you, so you lived so many generations with Baba and three times you are the only one. Uh -huh. When you are child, youth, adult, senior, everything. So we are grateful to have you here to teach us. Yeah. I am really grateful in such a way that you know I have with your company, all your company, which is really helping me. That's what I was wondering. What is it making me come at three o'clock in the afternoon? <laughs> so it is, it's only your uh, uh, you are inspiring me. That's all I can say. We don't feel the time passing. Yeah, yeah. It goes one and a half hours goes like that. Yeah. Okay. okay. I think. Okay, Sairam, everyone. Sairam, Sairam, safe journey. Safe journey. We'll close with, we'll close with Samastha Loka, Sairam. Okay, Samastha. Om. Samastha Loka. Samastha Loka, Sukhino Bhavantu. Samastha Loka, Sukhino Bhavantu. Samastha Loka, Sukhino Bhavantu. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Sairam, everyone. Sairam, Sairam, and love you all. Have a safe trip.